Hey, everybody. I want to thank you for investing in the Shareholders Podcast. I'm Monty here again. Guys, this is the last show of the season. We're going to take a little break after this, so I'm glad to have my guests on. I got, let me, let me just break it down real quick. Doing this show is amazing for me because I get to talk to people in different walks of life, different kind of professionals. And some people do things I know about, some people do things I don't know about. And I love when I really don't know a lot about what I'm talking to somebody because I can ask real questions. And I'm gonna have, I have on today a person who is an artist. And I mean, I'm an artist musician wise, but she is an artist. I'm talking about with paint and she does, you know, the full gamut. And y'all, if you know me, you know, I can't draw worth a lick. I can't trace, I can't do, I can't cut and nothing. And, but I love people that can do that. You know what I mean? And she does a lot more stuff, but I saw some of her things. I was recommended to her by uh, Erica, who's been on the show. And I said, I'd love to have a real, real artiste on the show. So I have Miss Tina Barnes on today. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. I like to go by Tina Marie. Tina that's Marie. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. See, I messed yeah. that up too. Right. No, Tina you're Marie. good. You're I'm good. I'm sorry. Yeah, we... So, so you use my government name. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Don't use that government name. No. Yeah, we do no. it one time and that's it. Okay. So we yeah. do that. So yeah. So um, I'll, I'll I'll give you a little bit of backstory. Yes, so please do. You have an idea. I'm originally from Chicago, okay. and um, I grew up performing professionally. Um, and I was an actress, a dancer. I grew up in the in that that era where it was like you were taught and raised up to be a triple threat. You need mm. to know how to do it all. So you need to play an instrument. You need to know how to dance. You need to know how to sing. You need to know how to act. You need to, so I took several classes. I'm Well, intense classes, not just several classes, but I, I did all types of training. Um, I taught for the School of Benverine of, um, Benverine School of Performing Arts. I have danced all over. I, I studied under Katherine Dunham's technique. I started singing and doing shows and here and there. Well, as I got more into college, I, I always loved paint, but I wanted to, um, to kind of hone more in on that part of me and my mother was she loved to paint and stuff so I started to get into more of the the actual like sculpting painting you know sketching doing a lot more of that and then when I decided to create my business art by Tina it was an acronym for Tina talents in natural art oh. and that came about because I have no formal training in that particular form of art but I can kind of do a little bit of everything and nice. I used to do radio for years. So man, okay, all right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Whole, uh, Chicago, though. See, I got I got family in Gary, Indiana. So um, oh yeah, I lived in Gary, Indiana for a little bit. I'm yeah. from Michigan originally, so we go to Gary, and then to get to Chicago was a big treat for us back in the day. Oh man, we yeah. did something. Uh, so Midwest, <laughs> Midwest for sure, Midwest ties. So I want to first. Again, I just I love the backstory because now you've given me some extra things to talk about. But I want to just for those watching and listening, uh, I love this definition. I looked it up in the dictionary. Art is defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. So when you hear someone that you know, I, I think people always hear artists, they think just a singer, but it is. But also, you know, musician, dancer, like you talked about. Uh, poet, people that are that that paint, that sculpt, all those things. It is really what is defined as the expression of human creative skill. Do you have your own self, kind of what you feel art is, or what you define art to be? Yeah, I do. I love that definition, though. I will tell yeah. you that. Um, I would say if I were to sum it up in just two words, it would be self-expression. Mm -hmm. But I I have this belief. And I could be wrong. This is just the Tina belief. This is Tinaology. <laughs> um, I have this belief that as an artist, it has to be embodied in you. You can be taught technique. Somebody can sit down and show you, okay, if I want to draw this picture or I want to, you know, paint this, I can give you the little tools and say, okay, do a horizontal line, do a vertical line, do a circle, and you can see something. But in order to be a true artist, I think it, it has to be embodied in your soul you mm -hmm. have to truly live it breathe it smell it taste it if you if if, if you are and, and i would say i'm an artist in all gamuts 
because I can do so many different mediums, you know, but I don't see things the way other people see things. I don't, you know, I was even talking to my daughter in the car and I had asked her the question and she started saying, yeah, mommy, cause like I can look at that car and I see a face and I can look over here and I see this. And, and then, but you can ask an average person who is not necessarily an artist and they may not see those things that you see. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, at the core of me, I do believe that it's self-expression and it has to be connected to your soul. I think the true artists are really in touch with their soul. So yeah. you kind of already hit on this uh, when you kind of give your backstory, because my next question was, has this always been in you? But clearly it has been, because you said even from yeah. the So I want to ask then, was your mother, because you said she was the one that kind of pushed you in this, was your mother kind of into this as well in terms of art art and stuff like that? Well, so my mother went to the Art Institute. She was a lover of like drawing. She used to play the drums and she and, and she was a lover of art. Um, but even though she always, she kind of like opened that world up for me. Mm -hmm. It was more of me though. I can, I can recount, like I had jotted down a note about that question because I remember when I was three, I started dancing. I started performing then. And I, I used to run around the house just saying, I'm going to be a solid gold dancer. My mom will be a solid gold dancer. And I would <laughs> kick my feet all up and I'd be all extra dramatic. <laughs> and I would imitate every commercial that came on and stuff. And so to be three and, and, and there, there used to be places like, you know, we would go out and we would um, to a restaurant or something. And I remember I was, I was probably like six or seven and I was offered a job. They said, well, she's too young right now. But when she's older, have her come back because, you know, like if you're waiting, it was a Mother's Day and everybody was standing around waiting and it was a live um, jazz band playing. I just ran up there and I just started singing and dancing and showing my stuff. And my mother did used to always teach me, Tina, you have to be willing to give it to them right then and there. It, it, you can't say, oh, I'll come back later. No, if the opportunity comes, you have to be able to drop it like it's hot. And do, it, <laughs> do what you need to do. So um, we would go to the movie theaters and I don't know, back in the day, you know how you'd have the intermission and you sitting there, you waiting and they're playing music. And my cousins would get so embarrassed because I would run down to the front and I would put on a full show. <laughs> <laughs> See that, so yeah, so it's always been, okay. It's okay. always been in me, yeah. <laughs> That's, um, man, I love that you said solid gold. That took me way back, I used to, <laughs> man. I <dated> myself. <laughs> Young folks, if you watch this, go go YouTube it. Y'all know nothing about no solid gold. Dude. That was <laughs> that was everything. When I was a kid, I used to go, I used to love watching that. But um that's that's amazing though. So then now here's my thing. So I know like with singing or somebody that can play, and not to just kind of objectify the gifts, but you could tell, like, man, a Whitney Houston, oh, she could sing. And then maybe somebody right. can sing, but not really have as, as good a gift you know, or for me, you know, musicians like man, my, my man's can play, you know, he can great. For me though, other parts of art, I really don't know if it's just subjective. Like I, I watched, I had an opportunity to go to a ballet. The first time I ever went to a real, real ballet. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, I said, this is like the greatest thing. I've, these people are unbelievable, but I don't know what great dancer is compared to just you know what I'm saying? A decent, yeah. Man, you know what I mean? Or yeah. If you if you put up a painting of a coffee can and then you put up the Mona Lisa, I'm gonna be like that Mona Lisa <laughs> type. But old boy did that coffee can too, fam. I don't know. <laughs> so in your interpretation, because you've been so exposed to so many different broad things, is art just really kind of a beauty in the, is the eye of the holder thing? Is it subjective, or is there really tears to this thing? You think? You know what? <laughs> I would say it's subjective. And the reason I'm going to say it's subjective, now I got a couple of little stories I want to share with you on this. Please do. The, number one, the reason I would say it's subjective is that if you, have you ever heard of um, Jean-Michel Basquiat? Oh yeah. Okay. Now I've grown up, I'm a hip hop head. So I've grown up being very much aware of who he was, right? Mm -hmm. But I cannot say I was a lover of his work. I'm, I have been like immersing myself in it so I can understand it more and I'm starting to gain an appreciation. But when I would look at his work, I just didn't see <laughs> what the $110.5 million sale was. I just didn't quite see it. But I'll tell you this, 
I was I was happy for my brother and and it encouraged it has still encouraged me and to this day it encouraged me to be like know the value of your worth mm -hmm. you know when you put it out but what I think it is is that at the core of it when I was telling you about the soul of an artist like it, it has to be within you it's the message you're trying to convey if that message that you're trying to convey no matter how it appears if that message can touch other people then I think right then and there you up at the top yeah you like you 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 are sitting pretty so i i would say it is in the eye of the beholder but um the next thing i was going to say is years and years ago i i have so much love for him but i have a lot of scars for this man <laughs> he was my artistic director at the theater company i grew up performing in and um when i really really started to work on my painting i there was an art gallery that was a that was you know, within the same art studio, like it was, it was right there. So I was like, man, I want to see if I can get my work displayed up there, you know? And I call him up and I send him over some pieces and he says, your work is not finished. Hmm. Now to this day, <laughs> date myself as old as I am now, I'm sitting here like, who are you to tell me that my work was not finished? If I submitted it, it means it was finished in my eyes. Yeah. So that's where I would choose to disagree. I think a lot of, um, if you were to talk to an art gallery or you know people, they may have a different impression, but as an artist speaking, no. I, I feel like it, it is up to the artist to, to distinguish when they think something is complete, when they have felt, felt like the message they're trying to convey has been expressed. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, that's it. And that's, yeah. yeah. I, I really I like that. I like that because it really is. I'm I'm sure your teacher meant well, but it really is up to you. You know, like when you when you're done, yeah. with, it, you're done with it, and it's really your because it's coming out of you. So uh, that makes sense. That that's actually a, that's a great answer there. So um, then let me ask you this. I, I don't want to just I'm going to add kind of everything you said now. What is maybe the most difficult for you, and then what comes natural? Because like you said right now, you sing, you're a dancer writing, poetry, painting, and acting. Mm -hmm. Is there one that's just kind of easily coming to you? And there's one that, man, I've really had to work to kind of get better at this. Yeah. So I would probably say, like, since my business is talents and natural art, <laughs> because of that, I, you know, I will say that it, most of these things just kind of come naturally to me. They, you know, I, I sometimes I don't even, when I sit down to do things, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just do it. Yeah. And, but I would probably say painting is most difficult. Okay. Yeah. Very, very weird for me though, but it, it's probably most, most difficult because it can be so subjective, right? It can be so like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, do people really like this the way I like it? Do you yeah, know? Yeah. But then right at this moment, so the area that I'm really focusing and, and honing in right now is on a lot of my poetry, which are my what am I's that I'm doing um, and I'm posting them on YouTube or whatever. And I, and I take a specific object and I write it in poetry style and then I'm asking for other people to get involved and guess. Right now the words they just come so easy to me. Yeah. Um I can be thinking of something, but it's the same thing with I can say with drawing, like actual drawing. Like I I can just look at something and say, huh, I think I want to try that. And yeah. then I'll do it. And it's like wow I, it turned out good. I like this. But I didn't YouTube anything. I didn't look at anything. I just was looking at the object like I think I want to try this. You know, yeah. so I'd probably say that. But if you had asked me years ago, I would have probably said singing. <laughs> 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 singing would have been the most challenging. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. That, um, that, that same director, that same director, he cut me from a spot where I was a, I was playing a blues diva and he cut me from the spot, told me I was a wonderful actress, but you can't sing. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, it took me years. It took me years to kind of pull the layers off that bandage to say, wow. you know what? You need to present who you are. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't, you know? That, yeah. But <laughs> it really, it, that's, I love that. I love that approach. And it's funny because, um, like I say, I don't know why, but going back to when you talk about drawing, like, again, I envy that so much. I knew uh, a person like that that could literally just look at something and they'd be like, hold on, 
And I'm, I was like, how, how did you freehand? No, nothing, you know? Yeah. Um, I respect that so much. And I mean, and then I mean, he told me that day though, he said, well, he said, well, bro, it's the same thing with you. He's like, you can hear somebody singing something or some music and play it. I, I said, you know, I guess you're right. You know, it, it didn't translate to my writing skills, but I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying where, you know, <laughs> what comes easy to you and what's come natural to you. It's like, you don't even think about it. It's just. Right. And, and so um, that that's, that's, and a, it, that's. A, and it kind of goes back to your connection again. Like, um, so I'm, I, I am a true believer of God, right? And so I'm, I'm connected and I feel like I am connected, right? So, so I can just do something and I feel like that's because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because God has given me what I need in order to get me through it. Now, you just, that's the same way. I always wish I could hear something and just be able to play it. <laughs> that gift didn't come to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that gift did not come to me. <laughs> no, that's um, that's amazing though. That that it's just it's just how you know. I guess you know God created us different ways. You know, and we have different ways of expressing ourselves. But um, so in terms of a a personal level, so with your like your poetry right now, because I, I I I saw some of your links and I, I listened to it. What are you really trying to convey? Is it just where you're opening up your heart to us and we just receive it? Or are you really trying to get the listener to think in a certain mode, basically of, of you know, ponder this or ponder that? Like, what are you really trying to convey like with your poetry? Oh, mm. let me see. Cause when I originally, like when you originally posed the question to me and I thought about it or whatever, I was looking at my art as a whole. Mm -hmm. Or and my even art, if you want to do that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that and then I'm going to answer the specific question right. you just asked. So as a whole, I think because I am a lover of hip hop, it's going to always embody some type of feel of that, yeah. of that culture, right? So, but then secondly, it's more about value and empowerment and wanting to have an appreciation. Like, you know, as you can tell, I'm a little light bright. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm a little light bright, but I'm chocolate through and through, right? So, so but it's, it's, it's learning to love who you are, love your culture, embrace where you come from, and, and to also be able to um, open your eyes and envision bringing others through, bringing mm -hmm. others up. So that's the first thing. The second thing to answer specifically with my poetry right now, I think I'm just trying to share one. I'm trying to share a little bit of me, mm -hmm. just a little bit of me. Number two is to get people more involved with, um, with spoken word. Mm -hmm. We, we, we hear poetry, we hear songs, we hear, we hear all of that. But like when I'm doing a, what am I, I really want your engagement. Mm -hmm. I want to know, can you listen to the clues that I'm giving you? Like if you go back to radio, since I told you I had a history in radio, right? Yeah. You go back to the radio days. I remember when I was even growing up, yeah, we had TV and stuff, but she would be so excited to go and listen to yo, you know, we used to do this thing called uh, Coke Top 99, like in Chicago. So it would be like the top 10 songs in the evening and you you sitting there with your, your cassette tape and you're trying to dub your favorite song, you trying to call it, you know, but it was something about that because you had to listen. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so much of our, of this particular time, people don't do a lot of listening. They do a lot of talking. And they do a lot of, you know, exploiting themselves, but they don't do a lot of listening. So I think that for me, it's it's partly trying to get people more involved with listening and paying attention to the to to the sounds, the written words, the clues, and then being able to draw off of that. Wow. So and then at the same time, showing value and love and respect for yourself. Yeah. You know? Wow, that's that's awesome. That is uh, awesome. So then artistically speaking, um, who are some of your influences? Who are, you know, some people that you look to in any facet of art that you really okay. are liking? Man, I was like, I got so many. <laughs> I'm over here, I'm over here. I was You're doing like, so I'm much, here. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I'm gonna run it down. In my head, my mentor is Debbie Allen. Oh, come and, on. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you one of the story behind that one, okay? When I was a kid, I was young and I, you know, I would draw, I would paint, I would dance, I would sing, I was, you know, whatever. And my mother told me, 
you know, Tina, you have to be able to choose one. Now, I don't think she was telling me you can't do these other things. I think what she was trying to say is focus on one, get good at it, then move on to something else because you don't want to be, what is it? The jack of all trades, a master of none. none yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So I was like, yeah, okay. But then it was an award show. And this particular award show, Debbie Allen was being nominated for everything, right? And so it popped up and it said, Debbie Allen, actress slash director slash choreographer slash, you know, I was like, that's what I want to be. I want to be like her. I want to be like that. So, and then over the course of the time, she just has always struck me as a person I would I, that I would mesh well with, that I would like to get to meet, you know? So Debbie Allen would be one. Um, as far as in the acting realm, it's, it's really weird that I'm going to say this, but I think one of my favorite actresses is Diana Ross. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. When to see her in, cause I'm a big fan of, of, of Billie Holiday. Yeah, so to see her when she played Lady Sings the Blues, and then there was another role that she played where she had schizophrenia and she was just phenomenal. And it's like, even if you look at the whiz, like to me, it's like anything she's ever done, she's just always been so great. Great whiz, yeah. Yeah. So, and then if I'm looking at my artist, okay, so which I was excited because two of them actually came on and liked my work, which I was really excited about. Oh. But um, Justin Bua, David Garibaldi, Frank Morrison, and probably C Baby Bayak. And um, I'm trying to think from from any other aspect. I mean, there's so many, like from poets, Langston Hughes is my all time favorite. Oh, yeah, good one, good one. Yeah, Dr. Maya Angelou. Um, and I would also say Nikki Giovanni. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just read an article on the. Oh, okay, hold on. Though. Who's your favorite hip hop artist? So, then? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let me just tell you, because right now I am so into my boy Toby and Wiggly. Oh, are you serious? Yo, Come on. He is Toby. Like, Man, he I'm I'm putting him up there with my Kendrick, with my J. Cole. Yes. Toby I'm wants some other him stuff. Up there with my Rock him. So <laughs> yes. yes. Like the oh, yes. oh, I love that. He is kind of a modern rock him kind of but man, I love you just said that. Like mm -hmm. he is um I you know Toby, to, to, but here's what I love about Toby. Here's what I love. Number one, I love black love. Yes, I love the, the the fact that he loves his family. He he's not about the showboating. He's not, you know. It's and then if you listen to his metaphors, the brother be coming with it. Yeah. He, <laughs> he is, comes um, with it. He, you know what? I hate <laughs> that. You know, everybody's gonna say this, but I stumbled on him early, and mm -hmm. I didn't even. I should have asked him on one of my shows. I wasn't even thinking at the time. I was just enjoying the brother, and then he just, then he just blew up. Blew up. But um, I mean, all great success to him. I, but that's a great uh, answer. But real quick, I want to go back. You said uh, Debbie Allen. Yeah. Listen, I ain't no dancer, and I'm not a uh, singer and all that. But I used to watch Fame, like yes. when I was two. and like you know, in the intro, she's like walking and she's telling them what what I expect, and I was <laughs> blown away. Like, man, I need to go to wherever that is because she is no joke. And I used to love that show. You know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. was. Like that, and um, I thought I was gonna go to fame. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew I was gonna go there. <laughs> right, but that's a great. These are some great answers because she was really, and even for me, she was motivational because she seemed to just be so confident in what she was doing, and she, you know, the way. Even I know it was a TV show, but she was doing it in real life. That was her, you know. Yeah, but look life. at look at all that she's been able to accomplish. She was doing, she was directing and doing things yes. as a black woman. Yes. She was doing them when it wasn't even like the thing to do. It wasn't the end thing. Oh, and no. she was making a way for herself. So, and she's always, I mean, even down to like, so Different World was one of my favorite shows. <laughs> Different World, cause I thought I was going to be on Different World too. I thought, <laughs> I thought I was going to uh, Hillman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it told me that wasn't no college, you know? <laughs> but I, it was like, even just to know that she was directing that, she was doing all of that. You know, it's like, the girl is good. I mean, and, and now I wish, like my daughter is into dance. I only wish we were in LA so that I could be taking my baby to Dada. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, dance, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she, 
she was a huge influence. And she's, uh, again, young folk, if you're watching this, you ain't heard of pain, you ain't heard of solid gold. Go do your homework. <laughs> Jump on YouTube right now. I ain't gonna say no more. Okay. All right. Uh, just a few more uh, with Miss Tina Marie. Um, <clears throat> so for you personally, then, what is kind of your vision of success where, I mean, you're doing, you got a lot of things in, in the, in the you know, pot and things like that. And uh, very well gifted in a lot of things that you can do, but where kind of do you want to take the rest of your career? Right now, I want to become a published author. Mm. I really do. So the goal, when I started the What Am I's, they were just supposed to be, I, I lost my husband due to cancer three years ago. Oh, wow. And <clears throat> And during that time when he was sick and he was going through things, I didn't have much of an outlet. I, I wasn't painting much, I, I didn't. And I, I kind of go through these ebbs and flows. So sometimes I, if I don't feel it, I can't do it. I can't, it's like, if I'm not feeling like I'm not in that painting realm, I can't produce like that. If I'm not, I can have writer's block and I'm not writing. It just, it, and I'll juggle back and forth. And so that particular time I started figuring out like, what, what can I do? to like, I didn't necessarily want to journal, mm. but what could I do? So I started writing these what am I's. And I would pick this object and it came from a good friend of mine. She was doing it as a creative writing exercise. And I started doing them and then it became so much fun. And so I would just sometimes share them with like cousins or with friends of mine. It got to a point where they were looking forward to them. They would say, man, you ain't call me one more what am I today. Hey, I got the answer to that one. I want to tell you that one. So then, and I had a couple of sorority sisters who were like, hey, you know, I think you might have some here. Mm -hmm. So a part of me, after my husband passed, I was like, you know, I think I'd like to, I have so many of them and I'm still writing them. I was like, I love to create a book. Yeah. But how are you going to put out a book and nobody is interested in what you're doing, right? So I decided, you know, I was talking to a friend who works in marketing. He was saying, you know, just kind of suggesting, hey, I saw you posted a video. Why don't you start doing that more frequently? And then I just went ahead and I ran with it. So I think as of right now, I'm trying to focus on putting out my work so that people can kind of see what I do, what it's about, with the hopes that I will become a published author. You know, it would be nice. You know, I look at uh, Dr. Maya Angelou and I think of how she changed her life in so many different areas in her, you know, like, like you wouldn't have thought that she would have been in her eighties <laughs> doing yeah. poetry when back in her twenties, she was doing other stuff. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> so <laughs> I ain't trying to put it out there like that. I mean, the story's out there, but I'm just saying. Right, right. So, yeah. So it's kind of, of that, that thing, you know, my husband used to, um, he, the first time that we first started talking, he shared with me that his mentor in his head was Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, he's so deep. Oh, <laughs> you know? I'm like, so why you like Malcolm X? You know? <laughs> and he said, because he told me that because he changed his every time when he learned and he knew better, he did better. He became three different, separate, different people. Like if you met him when he was a kid, you met him when he was red, you met him, you know, like when you met him with all these different, you would have never known that's the same man that he ended up being at the end of the, at the course of his life. And there's something that is appealing about that. The fact that you evolve and you change and you become wiser and smarter and better. And I just think that, you know, to become a published author, to be able to impart that and share my talents, with other people, I just, I would really like that. I would even like to maybe one day teach, you know, like t in a collegiate um, area, you know, where I'm, I'm teaching the gift of, of, of poetry and writing because it really is, it, it really is therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, um, I think art in general, of course, is and in whatever way we express it and, um, I really, I really hope those things for you then, because, you know, it seems, you know, how they say the old adage, you know, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. And, yeah. you know, um, as long as it is, it just takes, you know, God lines something up, one person see it and they share it. And the next thing you know, so, um, right. I want, and it's great that you actually brought up books. I like to always ask uh, my guests on this show, are there any good books that you've read lately that you could share with the viewers or the listeners? Oh yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to look up just so I don't jack up the title of the book uh -huh. this book is phenomenal so it's Whoopi Goldberg's book 
and it says, um, if someone says, complete me, run. <laughs> oh, wow. This book is so wonderful. Now, it doesn't touch on art. It's not about that. But it's something, you know, in order to be successful in this world, you got to work on you. You got to make sure that you are a complete person without any other person, without any other, you know, object or thing that doesn't make you, you know, it's about who you are within and fulfilling that. Um, but that book was phenomenal. And, and she, she comes with it very straight laced, but she will tell you like when it's talking about dating and it's talking about just being involved with people. Um, what I'm currently reading is the win way like is intermittent fasting how to eat with dr oh. rosen and stuff it, because it's a it's an intermittent fasting but it, it kind of breaks down how we should technically be eating in the earlier parts of the day mm -hmm. because that, that's just the way our bodies are wired to do that and then so we should front load all of our calories at the front and then you know dwindle them down at the, at the latter part and i'm also reading amanda sills's uh book it's something oh, dozen yeah. Something doesn't. And then the book that is in my queue that I'm going to read as soon as I finish these two is the Barack Obama's latest book. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. That's some, some excellent recommendations, guys. <laughs> you, uh, again, you, as Tina Marie seems to be, she didn't give you a little bit of everything, for you, to read, you know, so uh, I love that. Man, thank you so much. Please, but uh, give your plugs. Let people know where they can find you and, and your, sure. your and all that. So you guys can definitely um, search me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Art by Tina, Talents in Natural Art. Tina is spelled T-I-N-A, Talents in Natural Art. So it's a little funny because, so I used to do graffiti, right? I used to tag. <laughs> and so a cutie was my name. As I got older, I became Ms. Acuity. So my handle on Instagram is mz. AQT. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can just find me under Tina Marie on Facebook or, and like I said, you can always just type in Art by Tina and things will pop up. Awesome. Yeah. Man, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did um, and learned some stuff. This was such a great uh, interview that I had. It's a great cap to a great season on this show. Um, I'm looking forward to some more things as well. You know where to check us out, the Shareholders Podcast, of course, on the Mighty Sharp Network. I'm Monty Ma. I want to thank again Tina Marie coming on the show. She was thank you for having me. I'm about to go watch some Solid Gold when I leave here. I just, she got me nostalgic, y'all. I'm about to watch some fame, all that. <laughs> but um, you guys always know what to do. Stay, stay blessed. Don't just be blessed, but stay blessed and stay sharp as well. Thank you again, Tina. This has been a production of the Mighty Sharp Network. Executive producer is Monty Mont. Watch the corners and always stay sharp. She